Are you wondering how to bring money into the U.S. or any foreign country, and you want the best rates? Well, today on our podcast, we have Currencies Direct. We have Brian Burnell and Ann Schneider here to help you figure out the best rates and the best way to move your money around from country to country. So with no further ado, let's get to the podcast. Welcome to Sarasota, Florida Living Podcast, where we help you understand everything Sarasota and the surrounding areas. On this podcast, we interview local businesses and experts to help you find the best people to work with for any of your needs. So sit back and enjoy meeting these wonderful people to help make Sarasota such a wonderful place to live. Who do we have here today? <laughs> Thank you for having us yes. uh, today. And I'm um, Anne Schneider, or Anna Schneider in German, uh, um, working as a rep for Currency Direct uh, in business development. Um, and I'm um, in Sarasota and take care of all the needs that happen related to foreign exchange. Here in Sarasota? Uh, Brian Burnell with Currencies Direct. Um, but yeah, yes, in Orlando is where, uh, where I live. Awesome. Yeah. How long have you been there? Um, I was actually born in Orlando. Oh. I've lived in various places uh, throughout the U.S. and then recently in 2017 moved back to Orlando. Um, but it's almost like one of those things where you are, I mean, home, uh, doing a lot of traveling and whatnot. Home is, seems to be a lot of places. Yeah, that's true too. But, so you're uh, so you're always traveling over. Uh, I, a little less, you know, since COVID and things like that, and the world kind of adapt. Uh, the technology, the technology, a little faster, and, or I guess we had to in terms of Zoom and a lot of other things. So yeah. a lot, a lot less travel, but it used to be pretty hectic. Yeah, yeah I think it's definitely forced uh, technology across the board. Everything, I mean, AI popped up out of nowhere. I mean, it was always working, but all of a sudden, that's in our face, right? Mm -hmm. So it was fun to watch people being forced to use it. And, yes, and yeah. then everyone caught on, and they're like, "Oh, why are we doing it this other way? This it's is so, so hard before." Yeah. So, um, well. I'm Dan Henson, this is Marius McCann, and um, you know, we're realtors, we're, we have a podcast studio here with Sunbiz Studios, and we're excited to have you here, and really wanted to, oh, so we met Ann at a ribbon cutting for John Cannon Holmes, Yes. you know, so it was really cool, because only so many people got invited to that, so we felt kind of honored to kind of be invited to that, and then we met great people like Ann, and she's like, well, you need to, you need to, we need to get together, because you need our service, you know, you're, you're talking about clients coming from out of town, and from out of the country, we're right up your alley, right? So, what is Currencies Direct, and you know, what do you, um, what do you do? Okay, you want me to tackle that one? Yes. Okay, I think perfect. So. <laughs> uh, so Currencies Direct, we do foreign exchange and international transfers. Our business really, and the industry, the whole industry, really came about where customers, clients, businesses were looking for services that traditional banks didn't don't offer uh, when it comes to moving money around the world. Um, they were looking for alternatives um, because the banking system uh, doesn't really communicate too well cross-border and their service is very clumsy uh, and quite costly. Um, so customers were looking for, for alternatives to move funds around the globe. Right. Um, and, and that's where we, we fit in or fill in. So um, to answer your question, in a nutshell, foreign exchange and international transfers, global right. payments. Now, are you limited to uh, specific continents or countries or, you know, is there, is it just anybody can work with you? I mean, you know, who's your ideal client in a sense? Yep. So we, last year we traded in uh, 45 different currencies. Uh, a lot of it can be currency specific as opposed to uh, a geographical region. Um, there are some places, unfortunately, that we, we aren't able to serve as customers um, from and but the majority of, of of areas we can some of the ones that we're not able to um, would be currently Russia uh, China um, some places within the Middle East um, kind of uh, what what one would consider a high risk jurisdiction um, sure. is, is something we're not able to to help with but the majority of other areas of the globe we can now is that um, really based on like uh, now I, we we try not to get too pol political here you know some podcasts go crazy on political but <laughs> but you know things that drive you know what's good for our country I think so is that is it um, are you kind of told by the government like we can or we can or is it a, is it a company choice by risk? Um, it it isn't necessarily a company choice. Uh, it's more of our banking partners that we utilize and okay. what choices they've. Uh, may have been forced to make or have made. Okay. Um, so it isn't necessarily a, a company choice. Uh, there are 
several organizations like ours that have the same restrictions in some of the areas. A lot of the Main Street banks have the same restrictions in those areas. So um, it isn't like a company policy of why we wouldn't do certain things. It's more to satisfy our banking partners, our compliance, our compliance teams, as well as the regulation that we're, we're um, held to. Right. Okay. Um, I did want to add something. So. Yeah. Sure. Um, sure. So we are in, uh, we have been established in 1996 uh, mm -hmm. um, in over four cont continents in 25 offices around the world globally. And um, we, uh, so that's kind of like what I wanted to add to, you know, how long we, we've been around in Orlando. We've been established uh, since 11 years. In, in Orlando? Mm -hmm. Okay. In the U.S. market. Yeah, some something? Perfect. So um, why do you guys communicate with realtors? Uh, what's the message you want to give to realtors? I know that you're a licensed agent like us. And uh, was this sort of this sort of fill a need for your clients in order to help achieve their goals? Is that why you've gotten with Currency Direct? Or? Well, and, and no. also to tag on that, you just mentioned you had a big meeting with the Michael Saunders group. Yes. And uh, you can kind of run that together yes. on that. So. Mm hmm yeah, yesterday we had uh, a great meeting with the Michael Saunders, um, three offices actually, Anna Maria Island, uh, Lombok Key, and uh, Siesta Key, uh, as, as well as downtown. So uh, brokers really paid attention to us because the need is really there to cater to international clients and closings um, that are actually underserved right now because the banking system that makes it more difficult to move money around globally. And we're actually spe specializing in the real estate industry, helping to uh, mitigate that problem and um, f streamlining the whole process plus saving clients money. And going on that, can you give me like an example why, like if I was, a, I'm a realtor, right? And I'm calling you, I was like, okay, I think these folks are moving in from Canada. You know, what can you do to help me? I mean, you know, cause I, I do have a problem. I just had a gentleman move two businesses and his family here. Mm -hmm. And it's, the money is an issue. Hmm. So, you know, how, how is, you know, how is your company help, help that process? I mean, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I can take that one. Yeah. There's, so there's, there's numerous things. Um, and through that process, it can be a little, a bit of a nerve wracking process for a customer who needs to, okay, uh, I need to send money to this place. I need to send money to this title company. I need to send funds to this bank account. It can get a little nerve wracking for them. Mm -hmm. um, so what typically happens, and let's just say a real estate transaction is a real estate agent's negotiated a great deal for their international client. Okay, we have a contract in place now. You need to get a deposit over, a couple That's grand, yep. five grand, 10 grand over pretty quickly. Yeah, three days. Yeah. So the title company in most circumstances sends the client some banking instructions and then the client looks at it and goes, okay, now how do I do this yeah. in three days? Yeah. Um, so what they run into with traditional banks is they run into extremely high margins or fees uh, and, and not true foreign exchange rates. So um, typically a US or a, a bank, a global bank, if they're sending funds in for a property closing, will tack on anywhere from between two to 5%, depending on what the bank is, uh, which bank it is, um, on top of what the true foreign exchange rate is. Oh, wow. So clients don't really know that until it comes time to send the money and they go, oh, wow, the exchange rate really wasn't what we thought it was. And they're um, kind of forced to do it. They're just like, well, okay, I guess I'm here, you know? Yeah, they're forced mm -hmm. to do it. And then subsequent to that, usually, I don't know, 30 days, 45 days, if it's a resale or a new build, what have you, they'll have a tra you know, tranches of payment or one larger payment to send. And that mm -hmm. one can really, um, really sting if it's, you know, 300,000, 700,000, a million dollars. When you're right talking now. about, you know, three to 4% savings, you know, that's 30, 40 grand that, yeah. that clients are potentially leaving on the table. And that's just on the, the, the conversion. Um, so that's from the client's perspective. Right. Your question was kind of from the real realtors or real estate perspective. Right. And um, our service is very concierge style. It's almost like, okay, you're going to receive these wiring instructions from the title company. Currencies Direct is going to help you get those funds where they need to go in the most cost-effective way. So we'll reach out to the customer, make sure that they're, they're getting the service that they need, the true exchange rate, um, as well as any further guidance. They like talking to us. 
Um, sometimes it's the first time they've ever sent funds overseas and they're a little nervous about it. Um, so we guide them along that process, make sure they're getting the, uh, the best rates of exchange. Um, all the fraud protection layers are there as well. Cust uh, the, the industry, the real estate industry at whole is very nervous about fraud. It's rampant. Oh, huge. Um, so, you know, us confirming beneficiary details with them. Oh, we know funds need to go to XYZ title company. We'll get it there for you. All of that stuff kind of reaffirming that. Um, so the real estate, the real estate community really enjoys our services, um, just for, you know, the feedback we can give to them. Oh, um, you know, your client said this, he's going to have the funds here on this day. We'll be well within the closing time period, et cetera. Great. Um, we kind of take some of those questions off of the real estate agent that, the client may ask them that they might not have the knowledge of. So we're kind of stepping in and filling that void. Yeah, and I think that's important because, you know, as realtors, you know, we're not attorneys. You know, we can always, we can just kind of suggest and and connect them to right people for that. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't dare step in your line of work and try to say, well, I know this because, you know, obviously they're like, well, you told me I could do this. And, like, they lose $8,000 because they didn't have the right exchange. So it's great having a partner like yourself. We can just say, you know, hey, call, call these folks over here. They're going to help you figure all that out, you know, and then, you know, hopefully you'll feel comfortable because if not, you can go go to your bank and then compare. But, you know, obviously with having a concierge service like that, it's, you know, for realtors, I mean, I didn't even think about this the whole time. And I have two people from Canada, right? And I'm like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know I, I mean, you're kind of out of that game with them because you really don't understand it. So, and I, I think... We're in a very unique market anyways, in a very unique space. Um uh, people don't think that way because we haven't been as global as we should be. Mm -hmm. And I think Florida really has um, the biggest, this, it's a sunshine state. A lot of people are flocking to Florida. There's the, this is where the investors will come to. And uh, those um, questions will be uh, much more important to answer and educating the real estate industry on different options. I think it's in, in the benefit of the client. Well, and then now is Florida, um, is Florida a high desire? I mean, are you, are you looking at real estate as one of your big parts of what you guys do? I mean, there's obviously all the services with currency changing, but is real estate like 10% of your business or, you know, as far as helping people, is it a lot of real estate? Yeah, that's a good question. So we do this globally. Um, and so we've got offices, we've got 20 plus offices all around the globe. And I would say probably... 40 to 45% of customers that we help have been introduced to us by either a real estate uh, agent or an immigration lawyer, a international CPA tax advisor, uh, an, an international financial advisor, all of those professional services. Um, I would say real estate's probably one of the larger of those verticals. Okay. Um, but it is a big, a big component of, of what we do. The rest of the business or the rest of the um, customers that come to us are either from our own uh, marketing campaigns, Google search, SEO, all, sure, the other, all sure. the other stuff. Yeah, I can see but real estate. But it's a big estate. vertical for us. Yeah, um, I can see real estate being a big thing because, I mean, it's such large chunks of money. You know, it's it's not just like, hey, I've got to send like three grand over. It's, you know, mm -hmm. half a million dollars, you know. I mean, so it adds up pretty quick. What I was going to add to what you just said is that my uncle's an Im immigration lawyer, pretty big he owns a huge firm in um, Georgia, so I'll definitely be sending this uh, information on to him as well because he's got people that are, learn, you know, that don't know about all these moving parts when it comes to moving money over here and whatnot. But uh, how can you save money when when transferring um, their currencies for real estate transactions? Then you kind of like cover that a little bit but uh yeah i can but, i can elaborate on it further if you yeah, like. yeah yeah i think that that's that's kind of like where our main area of interest is with well, this showing, showing the value right i mean yeah you're, you're showing a value it's like this is why you're using this and and, mm -hmm. and uh so and, and everybody yeah. wants to save money right exactly <laughs> right yeah. at the end of the day so there's a few ways i mean right off the bat we don't have any type of like transfer fees at all and Typically for a foreign inter international wire, there's usually a 50 or 60 or $70 international transfer fee. So we don't have any of those fees. And a lot of times that's where the client thinks that the money is made in the transfer fee, and it's really not. It's more in the conversion rate of what the uh, client is getting. So in a sense, we are operating as, you can look at it as wholesale currency because of the volumes that we do, and we're allowing customers and clients to, t to use the rates that we're purchasing at. 
So typically it can be, um, you know, two, three, four, sometimes 5% better than they're getting from banks. And that adds up quite a bit. Um, particularly, like you said, with, with larger transfers, it can add up. It's not uncommon for us to save a customer five, 10, 20, 30, $40,000. Wow. Well, that's great. On, just on the conversion. Right. right. So <clears throat> where we go further with savings, et cetera, is, uh, is with services that banks don't offer. So for example, if a customer was, um, let's just say they were moving here or buying property and they're, and they're German and they're seeing the Euro US dollar rate at 108.70, where it might be today, they might go, you know what, Brian, I really like where that rate is, but I would like to see if we can get 111 or 112. I've got a little bit of time to play with. My property contract isn't due until um, you know, another 20 days where I need to send the full amount of funds. Um, can we work with that? Yeah, we can. We can, um, a few things. We can set an order out there for the customer at a, at a particular rate that's not available on the market. And when that rate becomes available, we can notify the customer or actually convert, convert at that rate. If the customer would like, a lot of questions we ask, well, what's the exchange rate going to do during that time period? Um, we can have some good insight, give them the probabilities of things that may happen over that time period. We might say, you know what, don't convert today. Let's, re let's revisit this next week, the following week. Um, it looks like the, the rate might get a little better for you, and we'll go ahead and convert your currency at that time as opposed to today. Wow. So there's another, area, another element of, of savings within there. Um, the alternative is closing day comes, customer uses his bank, and whatever rate that day that that bank's offering is what he's That's stuck. What so there's a, there's, a, um, there's a lot of areas in there where we can offer more uh, in terms of savings than just the conversion price. So Okay, so yeah. like the biggest um, piece of advice we can give them is, you know, send them to you early, as early as possible, mm -hmm. and you guys can look at what the rates are like, and you can kind of determine, okay, you've got 30 days, we can play around with the numbers and kind of see what happens because sometimes waiting one day could, could be a lot of savings. It could be a total, it, it, it can be. And you know, each client's really different. Some might want to, you know, wait and let's see if the rate will get a little, get better, yeah. get a little bit better for me. Some of them don't want any type right. of risk at all. And they want to, they know where the rate is now. They'll go and say, let's just convert today right. because I don't know what's going to happen. I, right. I like, the price I bought the property at. I like where the Euro US dollar rate is. Let's yeah. just get this going now. We can purchase dollars for them then, and then on closing day, we can go ahead and release dollars at that time. So each client has different, We and we really gauge on on right. what they want to do and just kind of offer them different tools and different avenues to accomplish. Do you know what this reminds me of? Hmm. Locking in your rate, your interest rate. <laughs> it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of that because it's like you're playing a game, right? You could, if you don't lock today, it could go up tomorrow, or it could go down, you know, but you don't know. And I've seen people, because I was in lending myself, mm. and um, I would see people playing that game, and uh, they would always ask me to tell them, but I'm like, that's not my place, you know, because right. I don't have a crystal ball. Can't time the market. I can't time the market, right? But I've seen people like really miss out on a great rate just overnight, you know. And they're comfortable, and usually yeah. as long as they know with with what the the risks are, and they right. they do when they make those decisions more often than not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely like locking, and this is the same exact thing, but with foreign exchange rates. We've got a pro an offering for customers where they can lock into a rate for up to two years. So wow. if a customer really likes where the exchange rate is, he hasn't quite found the property that he's looking for, very confident that they're going to be making that purchase in the future, we can lock into a rate for them today and honor that for, for a, a period of time. And we can go over that and explain the, how that works to the customer or client. Um, Probably isn't some, we haven't been seeing too much of that with buyers coming this direction as some of the foreign currencies have been on the weaker side against the US dollar. Right. But I can remember when I was in the space when, you know, the euro was in the 150s and the pound was in the 180s and 190s where um, customers were fully taking advantage of that going, wow, this is a, this is a, the US dollars on sale yeah. like, and we want to lock into this rate for a period of time. Now, so. Is there a, like a small fee for something like that? Like a lock? Like I know like with mortgages, you know, there's a fee that comes along with a, the longer the extension, the longer, you know, there's a rate, there's a, 
a fee. Sure. You know, is that a similar similar process? Uh, we don't really have any fees for that. We do require a deposit to hold for a customer, and it's ten percent of the full amount. It's not a fee. It's just us us ho holding on to to that, so that when the time comes, the customer is still going to fulfill what they've what they've wanted to do. And that'd be brought, based on their plan. You're, you're, I mean, you're working on a plan with them at that point. Right. I mean, I mean, with all points really, because if you're if you're a thirty day close, you're pl you're working with them through that whole process. As opposed to like, oh, I need my money tomorrow morning. Right. You know? <laughs> and the good news is I feel like uh, customers really can make their own decisions on this. So they have a lot more tools to play with. And um, it's just in customer more, more customer friendly that a lot of people are not aware of at this point. So if I, tra if I was moving from Germany and I was transferring money and I'm working with you because mm -hmm. you're kind of my, you're, you would be my liaison, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm working through sure. you and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about this. Not, so they're just kind of through the whole transaction with you until they close? So, or? Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. um, yes and no. Yeah. Um, so we've got over 500 employees um, in the office here in Orlando. We've got uh, in, in Florida, we've got 15 in the office. Uh, we've got uh, 10. And there are different positions within our company. We have, as I'm here talking with you today, customers I've been speaking to have been introduced to our dealing team or mm -hmm. our uh, account management team. And they're the, guy, the uh, guys and gals that are sitting in front of the screens all day long watching right. sterling pound, uh, uh, Canadian dollar, um, euro, South so they're, African. They're brand. the most up to date. And, they're, and a lot of the phone phone calls or email communications kind of get passed through. Although, although Anne would be watching a lot of the things that are going on, um, she's constantly out looking for new relationships, et cetera, sure. and, and doing those things. So if, uh, let's just say you're, you, you were looking for Anne at this moment and right. you're like, oh my gosh, your rate's really good. I want to purchase it. Yeah. We've got a, a, a central location for Oh, we're not waiting for, for her to answer the phone. That. It's, it's kind of, it's got a team that works with it and, and you know, you're, you know, if I'm picking up the phone, right. it gets sent to the right person, obviously. Absolutely. Obviously, I'm not a dealer. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. want to be a dealer. Right. Uh, but, but when clients get introduced to me, I can speak their language. And that's mm -hmm. a big key, too, mm -hmm. because their trust point to normally banks, um, obviously, they go there a lot and they have good relationships to them. But if they really understand how much they would save, it would be just in their best interest to talk to us and then I can coordinate the whole process of opening up the accounts for them I mean and and move them over to the dealer itself and it Our makes office. sense uh, and, and you said you and your your husband your family's from Germany yes uh, recently yes we just moved a year and a half ago oh okay uh, and we had the same problem but my husband is um, like a stockbroker in a way right. and so he understands um, what you know uses some you know some tools but um but it is um it is like always a, an important aspect of how do you move money and um and i i, I like I, I actually really like this um this option well and you're and you're helping somebody right you feel like you're truly helping somebody like i know this is a good way to go i mean yeah. it's easy to talk about it's kind of like when you're real estate too you know yeah. like i know this process with a builder i understand right. this process here and i know i'm helping you and yeah, we make money, let's of course, but you know, I still want to make sure that transaction is awesome because right. I'd love to have a bite to eat with you guys later or you know, a glass of wine or you know, a cup right. of coffee and not like, oh guys, how's it going? You know, you don't you, you don't want that feeling, you know. Right. And you just don't <laughs> sell anything because you're just helping. It truly you're helping helps. and helping make the best out of the whole situation because it is um, very difficult, like to sell a house. I mean the whole process is difficult. And um, you, you just don't need to worry about that aspect on top of it. I'm so glad we met because this is a side of the world from real estate. And, you know, I'm a broker associate and you think, you, you know, you think you have a lot of knowledge. And then all of a sudden this pops up and you're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize it's such an issue. I mean, that my clients are going through. I mean, I know that they've been talking like, well, we're trying to get a money transfer. We're trying to do this. But somebody somebody knows the in-depth working parts of that where I just know that they're trying to transfer money. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so now this is a great option to say, you know, hey, if you're really struggling, let's reach out and, and help you, you know, kind of have another option. You know, because they don't know either. Right. I'm Absolutely. Sure, you know, they're you know, just going through what they've been told by anybody. Right, yeah. and everybody trusts the bank. They're like, well, yeah, I guess that's the only way to go. So um, the more partners we can have to make a smoother transaction and to save them money mm -hmm. because that could be the you know that could make or break a deal too because Absolutely. 
that's a huge cost. So yeah, yeah for sure. It, you said uh, customers will struggle or, you know, you didn't know they were struggling. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say all of them struggle and no one yeah. can move money. Right, right. But, uh, but there, it, it can be nerve wracking. Um, and what we usually do is um, any introduction that we receive, we always, t- we always, you know, give a rate to the customer or client and say, check with your bank and see what, yeah. what they're doing. And they, they usually come back to us and go, yeah. you guys are beating them by a, a handsome amount. So we're going to go with you guys. And they have, and they have, you yeah. know, they have a team they're working with that they can uh, relate to. Yeah. So, um, so what sort of predictions you guys have for 2024? Ooh, um, predictions is a tough word. It, uh, <laughs> I, I like to work on probabilities. Hey, you, got that, things- you guys got that? Bowl over there, <laughs> there, there, there. Crystal, ball. <laughs> crystal ball. Yeah, yeah. I saw the boat over there, so like, let me just check the wind <laughs> real quick. Exactly. Check the wind real quick. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean probabilities. I, I, I like to kind of stand on as, right. as opposed to you know predictions, so you don't get you know massive egg on your face when, yes. you're, when you're incorrect. Um, <laughs> but I mean, com- from where we've been, and I'll talk about foreign exchange um, of what we're we're looking at there. I would, September last year. We, it's more evident now that that was really kind of the peak of the U.S. dollar in terms of its strength. Okay. At that time, you were looking at the euro was at parity or the dollar was actually stronger than the euro at that time, which hadn't happened in 40, 40 years. Wow. Um, you had the pound sterling at 104, 105, which was a really, really weak period for it. And a lot of it was due to the U.S. dollar strength. The Canadian dollar as well was weak. Basically, anything not U.S. dollar related was pretty weak mm-hmm. in terms of of of, of, of its um, purchasing power. That's changed. Um, so, like today, we're you know approaching 109, 110 on the euro, 125, 126 ish on the pound. Um, so we're looking at for that to continue, where the dollar will weaken a lot of the foreign currencies and anything anti-dollar. I'll call it anti-U.S. dollar, mm-hmm. where it's uh, is um, is going to continue to rally. There may be uh, an event coming where the dollar has a bit of strength um, and some of these pull back nicely, but I, 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 we're not forecasting the levels that we saw um, last September where the, the foreign currencies were, were very weak. Um, but that's kind of what we're looking at through uh, through the remainder of 2023 is the, the U.S. dollar weakening uh, a bit further, nothing crazy, nothing dramatic. I know there's not a falling lot of, out or anything, but yeah, just I, I know there's a lot of crazy, uh, not crazy, but uh, a lot of things happening to where uh, people are talking about de dollarization, things of that yes. nature. Yeah. Um, we're not forecasting that this year, um, um, but uh, but definitely some further weakness in the U.S. dollar bodes well for international customers that are going to be buying property here, right? Uh, it makes their buying purchasing power a little bit better, a little buying bit stronger, power. and um. And I mean, they've been used to strong buying power for for quite some time, and that really f- changed on its head the past couple of years. But we're, it looks like we're going to be getting uh, th- that older environment where the foreign currencies are, are buying a lot more now. Well, and as that dollar weakens, in in your eyes, does that make real estate even more valuable here for them to move in and grab? Because you know they're bringing. I mean, they're they get more bang for the buck when they come in, right? I mean, with their money. Correct. That's just it. Yeah. They're 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 getting more bang for their buck. Um, the dollars, the dollar. I mean, some of the the time periods where I've seen the U.S. dollar really weak. I mean, the amount of foreign buyers that were coming in, knowing that um, a lot of the Canadians, a lot of the Brits, a lot of the Europeans, knowing, going, wow. I mean, why wouldn't I buy this here? It's yes. really inexpensive. Um, we haven't had that type of level of of, of exchange rates. Um, it looks like it's it's maybe co- coming back or, or heading in that direction. But conversely, to talk about uh, kind of the flip side of that, um, we've worked with a lot of customers that have, uh, foreign customers that have sold property that was dollar denominated in the States, whether it be in Florida, whether wherever it was in the US, a lot in Florida, where they've uh, made just a killing on the capital appreciation of the property. I'm talking people that bought seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, they are converting back at their currency back and, and, and making a, a handsome amount on that as well. So it's almost like they've timed it right that way and they, they've kind of timed it right back the other way. So there's there's another component that moves more than just the capital appreciation of, of the property when you're dealing globally. And um, that was a, has been, it's still, a, it's still a strong trend, but the past four or five years, it's been a lot of um, British customers, European customers, Canadian customers s- selling one of their U.S. assets and moving some of those funds back and uh, 
and, and, and gaining that uh, price appreciation as well as the foreign exchange appreciation. Do you have to work and, and just listen, do you go through that and me being an investor and buying property and you might not know this, it might be a tax question. I mean, do they suffer that like capital gains like everybody else does? Like, you know, you know, they have, they moving it out of the country. Is there, is that a fee that comes through you guys or they just deal with their transaction with that? I mean, is that something you guys mess with or it has yeah. nothing to do with you? Good. We, we don't do any of the, the, the calculations or give any guidance and advice on that. We do the transaction and customers have, and because there's so many setups that they, if they've done things individually in a business, in a corporation, and there's all these different things. So we, yeah. we let them rely on there. And a lot of them will have, you know, straddling accountants that know both sides or they'll have one in each place. Um, the only time we really get into things is, uh, you know, if it's a seller and there's FERPTA involved, um, mm -hmm. We do receive FERPTA funds for them. We don't we don't uh, do any of that type of work. But in terms of, um, you know, we see a lot of, of tax withholding and stuff like that for customers. And, and when those funds come available, we have those, you know, sent back to wherever they would want to go. That's someone who had sold a property and is subject to, to FERPTA. But um, we don't really dive into too much on their tax situation. Okay. Yeah. So they, if, if um, say they're working with you, and, and it sounds like that there's – some savvy people that probably use your services that, I mean, I don't know enough about buying and selling currency, but is that some people get into that? That's all they do is buy and sell currency for the margins. Is that um, anything to do with your business? Yeah. Good, good, really good question. There are better platforms for that. I mean, our, our platform and our organization isn't really about speculating in the foreign exchange market. It's more of uh, a customer has a need. They need to have funds sent to a certain certain place or certain area, um, or they need to receive funds in that currency. And that's where, where we come into play. Right. Um, there are much better, you know, brokerage type platforms to, to speculate on foreign, they, uh, a, a good investor wouldn't use our platform to do that. Not there, that you couldn't, we don't encourage it, but it isn't, uh, yeah, we don't want to send people who say, Oh, I got this guy. You got to call, you know, they, <laughs> yeah. they do this amazing. And they call yeah. them like, yeah, just, Bitcoin or what something. Are you, doing, <laughs> you know, what do you, what do you send me this guy for? You know? Yeah. So, our, our specialty is more in global banking and, and in terms of how banking systems are and how they work in various places and connecting and it how all. And how to get it here yeah. and, and, um, and get it out. Yeah. Recently we had, I uh, just wanted to add, because we talked about global migration, mm -hmm. et cetera, in Florida. Um, there was an article that just came out also in the Florida uh, Realtors um, um, article uh, indicating that um, there is about a 20% uptick in foreigner invest foreign investments from 2021 to 2022. And the biggest group out of those are South Americans. Um, and one of the, str the strongest groups within that is like the Brazilians, uh, mm -hmm. followed by the Canadians and by the by Europeans and then some Asians after that. So you could see that there is like a definite need for that um, um, to, to, to see that the, the global, the, the world becomes more global. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting that you said that because, I mean, I deal with a lot of Canadian uh, folks. I haven't done a lot of South America, and I, and I know he does some European stuff. And, you know, we look at the West Coast as foreign because everybody's coming from over, <laughs> over the West Coast mm. for us and not yeah. to get too political. But a lot of people are moving to Florida. Now, your services are nationwide. Okay, so it's not just like Florida. I mean, even though we're here in Florida, right. but you guys can work yeah. anywhere. If they're calling you mm. and say, hey, we're moving to Wyoming, but we need to transfer, we just... Still Absolutely. Yeah. We've um, so there's um, as long as there's a foreign exchange need, um, we can certainly we can certainly help. Right. Um, we do. I mean, we've got reps all over the country, um, several in California, Texas. I mean, you'll find us where there are kind of hot spots of, of foreign activity going on. Sure. Sarasota, Naples, Orlando. Yeah, definitely. Um, but. But yes. One biggest element of it is to the U.S. Um, released the restriction of mandate um, uh, vaccination uh, coming into the country. So a lot of people held off of that. So I've, we're really thinking there's going to be a lot more um, demand. Yeah. And, you know, and even in this area, talking a little bit about real estate, because we're in it every day, um, is, you know, everybody's always talking about, oh, it's crashing, it's crashing. But here in this, and even like just Sarasota, Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch, Naples, Cape Coral, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people coming just because they're already going to retire anyway. If you're 60, 65, 70, and you've had, you know, mm -hmm. you've kind of been planning on moving to Florida, that plan is still in place, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, 
you know, we do have some people that are on our books that are like, hey, we're waiting for rates to drop. But, you know, you, like anything else, you can't time it, you know, but, you know, the value is still here. And, it's you know, they get more incentives on new construction. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I just did – we just did a property that was under half a million. And it was a multiple offer. Mm-hmm. We had five bids on a place in, in 48 hours, mm-hmm. you know, if it's mm-hmm. under half a million here in Sarasota. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think the people were coming here, and I think that having a service like yours um, – that I didn't even know existed mm-hmm. n- until we met over at John's um, is going to be a, a great thing for us. Cause now we just help somebody else in another way, you right. know, yeah. add it to our team and say, okay, well, we have a person that can take care of this or a team that can take care of this. Yeah. You need to talk to them cause I'm not an expert, but I know somebody is, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. I'm real excited. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful you came in from Orlando. I mean, Hopefully you get other business here and you get to go to the beach or something. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we ran around St. Armand Circle a, a little. Uh, I mean, I've been to Sarasota many, many times. Okay. I, I'm a Florida native, and I've, I keep, the next leg of the trip's down to Naples. We'll be at the uh, – um, we've got another colleague down in Naples, and then we'll be at the, the na- their neighbor. We're one of the, the affiliates down there, and, and they're, they have their expo um, that's that's taking place. Oh. Um, but, uh, yeah, we I mean, St. Armand's – Really nice. Yeah. Really nice as always. Um, yeah, it's been a bit since I've been down here, though. Um, and it's I, I've always enjoyed coming Yeah, it's here. great. Yeah, it's you great. meet everybody at a St. Almond Circle. I know. Because 33,000 people come through That's amazing. there. Like, it's like anybody from the Midwest to Europe and South America, they're all coming through there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hot spot. So you're going to be our local contact, right? Correct. Okay. Yes. Is, are you going to be our concierge? Yes, I will be the concierge. Um, I know how to manage stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, we'll try it out. Well, um, well, was there any yeah. last thoughts? Or I mean, what, what, what's some other things we need to know about this? Because, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm totally blown. i got to take notes later. Well, I go around and write down I wanna, how to implement this in my team now. I want to add a couple more things. Uh, one of the things is that we actually won the last um, three consecutive years the best uh, FX money award um award <laughs> and uh, so that's really something that kind of you know underlines that we're actually doing knowing we know what we're doing and the other thing is that um we have a trust a pilot uh, of a five five star rating of trust pilot um uh reviews uh, which is also a positive aspect absolutely absolutely yeah um marsh got anything else yeah, so, um, okay, so for example, like mm-hmm. a more practical ac- application, yeah, you've got real estate, you know, massive transaction, but what about the folks that are just sort of like the Western Union customer? Like, is there anything there that would provide value? You know, you, they're sending money to family. Um, being uh, being that I'm Romanian, there's a lot, a lot of crazy stuff happening as far as like uh, charities sending money to, into Romania to eventually deploy funds into like Ukraine to like help them get out of there or whatever is needed. Uh, like just your $5,000 mm-hmm. gift, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, um, so the space, I, I mean, a lot of it, and particularly Americans uh, in terms of this, this foreign exchange space, mm-hmm. they don't realize how, how big and how vast it actually is. There are a lot of companies that have all of their little niches within that that space. Um, for us, as long as there's a destination account to send it to, we do bank to bank type transfers. So okay. as long as there's a destination account to to send it to, like a wire, uh, correct, or a a, a a a bank, a bank, they, yeah, then a customer can get the funds. Um, a lot of Western Union, like quick money type things, are come to a Western Union and pick up the cash that someone has sent to us. Um, we don't offer any of that, th- those types of services. Um, as long as there's a destination account that belongs to either the client or someone, we can send funds there. So that just point right there, that differentiates between a lot of, a lot of different organizations. Um, but in terms of nonprofit organizations, NGOs, uh, efforts that are sent out for those types of projects or programs we do have we do work with a lot of them um with their foreign exchange needs um the the interesting thing and not saying that that area of the world is this but a lot of those organizations really try to reach very deep into like almost non-banking type places Mm -hmm. where it's like 
you know, we want to help you, but we need to know where to be able to send, you know, these funds. And they're like, well, we don't, there's no bank, the, the, there's no banking infrastructure over there. And that's right. where they're needed most, you know what sure. I mean? Right. So, um, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of good services that if, if there isn't a, an end account there to be able to send stuff to, uh, they could, they could use, but for us, it's, uh, there needs to be an end account to, to be able to send to. That's interesting. I never think about that. I mean, you, you're dealing with it. So, um, what else we got? Is it? Is, I, I have is, something uh, else. I'm sure, I'm sure you do. As <laughs> <laughs> we get going here. When in doubt. Yes. 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 I got something else. No, Thank that's you. great. No, and it, it's awesome. No, I mean, like in terms of the security of the funds of customers. Uh, but I'm gonna turn that over to Brian now um, because I think he he can explain. Well, that and, and obviously you guys talk about this a lot, right? And and you're in the field, so as these things come up, I'm like oh, that you know, just like this. So because security are, is such a big thing. Yeah. You so know? customers like they're all really concerned about like you know with the banking system recently so maybe that's a good point to make yeah sure so yeah. and it actually it, it's coming up a lot more lately um with some of the regional bank failures and things of that nature or um people are all you know, they've learned and know a lot more about fdic insurance and all of these various things because it's kind of a, a, a factor to them that's now crossed their mind that they've never really thought of before um but in terms of how we handle money and and our uh, our, our our customer funds, um, we have a lot of banking partners and clients' funds never leave the banking system. It's not like there's a period of time where any of any of our client funds that are in segregated accounts come onto our currencies direct ledger or we use for working capital. If something were to happen to currencies direct and they went out of business for some reason, all of the customer funds are still held with our partner banks. Okay. Um, okay. So you guys are like, you know, for that 10% down where you're locking in sort of today's rate for mm -hmm. two years or whatever, um, you guys aren't taking that money and making sort of, uh, investments in order to make more money for the company or whatever. <laughs> That's a different thing. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have a, uh, a good point I, though. You know, point. you've heard well, of Starbucks becoming like one of the bigger banks now because of their little cards, you know, yeah. their little cards. Uh, they've got like, millions of dollars that yeah. they have access to because they they make you load up this card and a lot of it it's like a gift card right like a lot of people don't think about it and it's like the money sits there right well, right these are so, questions that people have i'm sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm not the, trying, uh, yeah I'm not no the industry to. calls it the industry in the financial services industry they call it proprietary trading or prop trading right meaning that yeah your funds are here we're going to utilize it for something else don't worry your funds are still there or we're good for it right let's see what we can do over here yeah we don't we uh and that's that's regulatory for our industry. We don't do any type of proprietary trading, um, but the 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 funds ha uh, stay in segregated accounts for uh, all of our clients. And one of the interesting things that's come up more and more and more: the full value of our client accounts are insured. So okay. there isn't, and that's across, and that's across all currencies, and that's across different jurisdictions. That's so it's awesome. come up, it's come up quite a bit lately. And uh, for, for obvious reasons um, with some of the banking failures. And um, so whether it's the Eurozone or the UK, which is FCA regula regulated here, it's FinCEN in the US, um, they have their own kind of measures that they that they like for our types of companies. Um, but I, I, it's interesting that I say it, that ours, ours is actually more safe than a lot of banks than that are out there that are only offering FDIC insurance. Right. And so, so 100 euros, you're good for 100 euros. Anything happens with a transfer, somebody hits the wrong account number, whatever, whatever that may be. Yeah, really. So a lot of a lot of funds that get lost usually happen because of fraud. Mm -hmm. We can always reach, like if something were to happen, we can always retrace wires. We can always pull, th when things never leave the banking system, you always know where they are and you can, if, if there was a mistake, you can always draw things back. Um, but those are all insured. Um, the only time people ever really get into trouble or uh, companies get into trouble is when there's fraud or there's a, a hack of some kind um, and our state of the art systems, uh, I'm not gonna say that we don't have uh, people trying to, attempting to, to of hack course, us constantly, of course. Um, but is the best in the industry or best in the business for that. Um, but uh, but it's been an interesting topic lately. I mean, it's come up quite a bit on. I, I guess the the public is really um, 
they've had to ask themselves, okay, I, I need to spread my money out between various banks to. Mm-hmm. to, to well, and I think things. with with like we were talking earlier, the the expansion of technology being moving so quickly mm-hmm. and AI, like you know, with Chat GTP, is that right? Chat yeah. GTP. Okay. There's a P That's in there. It. I learned we that the other day. Yeah, my wife corrected <laughs> me the other day, but I gave in. I actually downloaded mine and I've used it. I, oh, I, we're I using gave, it too. I gave into the revolution a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we're using it too. I was fighting <laughs> it, but I was like, you know what? You, you got to <laughs> know it, it's right? Right. It's like and, TikTok. You eventually, eventually <laughs> finds its way on your phone. You know? Yes. <laughs> and um, but you know, I think that the 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 conscious of just there's so many moving parts and and you know security frauds i mean i've seen it happen in the real estate business and mm-hmm. i always it's only and it never happened to one of my clients but i saw it happen to another agent's client even a broker and, got yeah got and, tricked and then um yeah. you know so that's why i say just you know always reach out to the person you're working with and make mm-hmm. sure it's com- confirm the email you know because they just change it by one letter and then bam it goes somewhere else right so um, that's what's nice about having a service. You're, you guys are confident in your security systems. You're confident in your process. So as long as they're communicating with you, I mean, they should feel you know pretty comfortable with what's going on. You know, we have double compliance. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we have so much compliance. I have to take classes all the time, nice. <laughs> and I don't even deal. Wow. Well. Yeah, no, it's pro- quite um, extensive. Well, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Do you, are, are you staying in town for a little bit, or are you you got to drive back and, um, and deal with I four? I'm headed mm-hmm. to Naples after uh, oh, th- right. this evening. I I, uh, I booked a room this morning there. I always do things last minute because yeah. I, I never book ahead of, just in case I need to stay. Hotel, in hotels tonight. Night What's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, talking about that. Do you guys have a website where people can yeah. shop the rate or just sort of look at keep an eye on it, right? Because you don't want if someone's like needing in that thirty days to like send the money instead of calling Anna every, 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 you know, two days or whatever, can they go online and sort of like see what's. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I failed to mention, I mean, very important things. Yeah. Um, online platform. Yeah. Cu- that is fully a customer can do everything they could possibly want to do on there in terms of looking at the rates, make transfers, any of that. Um, we do have an app as well where they can view rates at any time. Um, all of it kind of comes with a platform to that you would have to uh, a customer would have to set up, and that's a very quick and easy process. It's a digital process. Um, it, it'll ask for their name, where they live, their date of birth, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. We usually don't need any type of documentation to verify a customer. We have global systems that um, that so for someone, let's just say in the UK or someone in. Uh, in Canada or South Africa, they can plug in their details and quite often their account just opens without any further information that we would need in real time. So you can get quotes quickly if you'd like. Is um, there like a dashboard for like, I want to keep an eye on the Euro and the Canadian dollar or whatever? You can do things. You can set rate uh, watch orders in there if you like, or rate alerts is what we call them as well. Oh, okay. Um, a lot when it's, we try to interact as much as we can with with our clients. I mean, some people are just web only. Don't talk sure. to me. Um, yeah. There's a, yeah. Well, others <laughs> want when it's a larger transaction. You know, they they definitely want a lot of communication. The peace of mind are talking about. Yeah. So it's it, we can handle all all types. So. And and that was gonna that was going to my next question. Since you brought up the website, I was actually on there this morning looking around, and I thought it was really cool. You, you have a spot that says news. And you see what's like happening, you know, you see articles and things that are coming from your company mm-hmm. like, you know, this is happening today, mm-hmm. this happened last week. Mm-hmm. And is it now if you go online and, and we're sensitive as realtors about this because, you know, when you take somebody to a new builder, they want to make sure they got the realtor's information or you can't help them, right? They're just stuck on their own if they go with the builder without you. Right. So same kind of thing. If they go to this site and they register and they kind of get a feel for who you guys are, can they still work with Ann? Because because the thing is, is you know, if if one of my clients goes to build a website and register, you're done. You you can't right. work with them anymore. And and I mean, I was a little selfish. And I mean, and it's come from realtors doing sh- some realtors doing shady things where they just like, oh, you you were assigned, throw my name on there. And I see what the builders are trying to do. Right. But in this sense, is you know, we're they they're probably going to check you out a little bit, figure out what's going on. But then, you know, I want my client to. To talk to Ann because yep. I, I feel comfortable with that tran- handoff, mm-hmm. you know, and I want to make sure mm-hmm. that they know that at least they're talking to somebody. Mm-hmm. Is there a difference if they go on that site without or they can still work with Ann? They can certainly work with Ann at any time. Okay. What we usually recommend to uh, to realtors when they're going to introduce a client, 
copy in on an email with the perfect with, with and the, the name and even if they've already gone on to open their account and they've hey you know what i took your advice and i opened the account with currencies direct you can still copy them on an email to ann and ann will jump in perfect and or just let us know who and that's are. and that, that's kind and of where i was jump wanting, in we, time. we yeah. want that handoff service right. because you know as we work with clients um you know we, we, we work with certain attorneys and closing title companies and and lenders and I never want anybody to pay me anything because, you know, I always wanted to say, hey, if they're part of my team because they just do a really good job. Right. You know, and I just prefer that, you know. So if that lender's great, all I need is that my, my client's happy or my customer is happy. That's all I need because sure. I, don't, I don't need to pay for flyers <laughs> and anything like that. So I feel since we've met how we have, mm-hmm. as soon as somebody's asked me about this stuff, I'm just, tra- I'm just transferring it over to you guys mm-hmm. because, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to say anything that I, you know, have no knowledge of. I, say, I just know they're good at it. And the questions you have need to be answered by them. Right. Yeah. So that that's important to our team. And we have a team of six agents here, so we want to make sure maybe we'll, you know, I'll have a meeting one day. But mm-hmm. and we're not quite as big as Michael Saunders with, like, you know, yeah. hundreds of agents in here. But, you know, we, but we'll make sure everybody understands. But we like you. At. But we like you. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll offer a nice lunch, you know, over at, uh, you know, Gecko's or something like that. We'll go have Taco a nice Bell. lunch. Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Taco Bell. Yeah, there's a, there you go. Well, he has, he's, I've he, never, I don't no. eat, no. no. He's no. very picky about food, but no. he loves his food truck up here, and he's like oh. the burrito. He he's literally parks his car. <laughs> that mom pump and, shop, and, and they have it like waiting for him. You know, he didn't even call. <laughs> they ahead, see my you know? car. They see me <laughs> pulling it, <laughs> and so they already crazy. have it ready to go. They're like a family owned little place. That's like, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do they do they bill you monthly or every <laughs> time? It's like <laughs> have a, you have tab. a tab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. They don't charge me sales tax. Uh, That's they, oh. t- they deduct the sales straight away. Yeah, but I do want to add something else. You probably wanted to know. How much money you can possibly send at one at one that would, that transaction would be in one transaction? Okay. I'm turning it over. There's a, there's a there's a dollar figure. Oh, no. I, I, that, we don't. I mean, it, there aren't really any limits to the <laughs> upside. If things start getting to you know you know twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty million, um, wow, we may have to get some documentation and just kind mm-hmm. of you know verify a few things, but. Um, there, there aren't any limits to, to what a customer. I surely hope I can send somebody that's going to need that money transferred. (laughs) Uh, limit low. Is there a limit low? We don't. And the reason we don't is because a lot of our clients, um, they've done a real estate transaction with us and they're like, you know what? I need to, I've got a child going to school in Hong Kong. I need to send them some money. 10 grand or 5 grand. We'll, we'll do, you know, as, as low as need be 200, 300 dollars. Right. You know, so we don't really shut that off. Um, on, on, the, on the low end, um, but... Builds loyalty, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. And so you can they're going to look for another place to do it, and we'd rather, we'd rather mm. do it for yeah. <laughs> Even and, though it's like nothing gained yeah. for you, but... Yeah. And even customers can always try us out. Sometimes they just don't trust the whole aspect. The whole process. So they'll spend a dollar to see. And they just go a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. How is the process? That and makes sense. Just that makes get sense. to know us. Get right. to know us. Try your good luck and uh, <laughs> stay with us. If I was to go with my family to Ireland next mm-hmm. year and stuff, so that's the best way to do it. I mean, would I just come? Would I call you and say, "Hey, I need to take my money to Ireland," or, or do I need to like be moving there or something? I mean, it, it, no. Just yeah. like I, I don't know, right? I'm going. I'm going to Ireland. So what do I do? <laughs> as do long I just as go there and transfer when I walk off, you know, the plane? Yeah. Or what's what? the best? What's the best? Yeah. Gift? As long as we have a destination account to send to, you might not. We can send to a friend if you're meeting someone there, and gotcha. you, they can withdraw the cash for you. Perfect. Um, but in terms of a physical cash serv- service, we we don't have. Don't, don't do that. We don't offer that. Right. Um, the some we are soon bringing a um, a a debit card to go along with the actual accounts for US based customers. Mm-hmm. We have that currently uh, for uh, UK customers, European customers, and a few other areas where you actually have a debit card tied to the account. So in your case, if you were going to Ireland, you could just go ahead and purchase euros to us on, on the account and then have a debit card that you could swipe okay. euros in uh, or pull euro cash out of um, in, the, in, in Ireland. Okay. Um, but that that one's still in beta testing. Uh, okay. But uh, soon to come. So by next year, when you go, <laughs> exactly, exactly, we'll, we'll soon, get you sorted any which way. Soon is it like yeah. a prepaid, um, loaded up with cash? It, it is. Go, it's a prepaid card. Got is it. What it is. And does it charge you when you're loading it up, like the exchange rate? It will. You can do it any which way you want to. So if you wanted to pre-purchase the euros, let's say you were going to Europe, uh, you could do so and then utilize the euros as you see fit. Um, through that card, so the rate has already been, it's already been converted. 
let's just say you had dollars in your account and you started swiping in a jurisdiction that was in euros, it would just take that day's, wherever the market was at that moment, our exchange rate and convert for you. Uh, so that way your card won't like decline or anything because you don't have any euros in your in your balance. So the probably the best way if you wanted to manage it or control it would be to purchase euros up front within your currency's direct account and then swipe in euro. No, way you're not thinking about it. It's already been done. It's already been done, right? What's, what balance is there is what you got mm -hmm. to spend. Got it. Mm -hmm. and you know what? I, the, I dislike nothing else more than going to Europe and take my American bank account and, um, you know, my credit card. And every time I do a transaction, it's $3, $4, $2. It's crazy. It's yeah. like, why would you give that money away? It's right. like, you know, I mean, on, if you're spending a good amount of uh, time there you that's what really want to be yeah. aware of that that's what i meant because um i've been a big wells fargo customer for years and years and years because they're just convenient they're yeah. everywhere yeah. right but it just drives me nuts you go and you spend your money and it's just like the fees are just crazy right yeah there are a lot of credit cards out there i mean i guess uh one of the the main things that we expose to a lot of of people the when they say no fees so like there's a lot of credit card companies out there that will say you know we don't have any international transaction fees or anything like that which is fine which is great but it's really not where they're making the money they're making the money on the conversion right um so they're when and when you dive into it and see okay wait a second i bought this this purse at this time and the rate was this and that was the rate i got great you didn't get any fees but the conversion was was where they made all their money same with bank to bank transfers same so um like the fed works with us you know <laughs> <laughs> how they how they pay how they pay the banks or how the bank gets their money yeah mm -hmm. but um but yeah that's uh primarily how we work on the travel side of, of things well i'm you know i'm got too much in my head now to learn so now i said i had to go back to all right let me see this now how can i help but i think the easiest way is just make sure they get a hold of you um i mean it's really enlightening because i'm so glad we met because i have a whole different perspective of of that now and how to help mm -hmm. so i never had that opportunity um i didn't know what to say to anybody well i think you so. you um you are the one suggesting this call so which is amazing yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much well and i appreciate you guys coming in and uh now we had no problem saying that you do real estate and mm -hmm. and 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 um and you're helping with uh foreign exchange so we make sure you get a hold of any way if they they need your help especially if they're coming in from germany because you understand the process so mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and uh, i mean who wouldn't want to be in florida right now i mean we get a lot of flack but i mean still awesome it's a little hot today though yeah <laughs> it's well, a little hot yes right and we were thinking about having uh, a cigar uh, later uh, and we're like oh it's kind of hot we have to wait till the sun goes yeah, down wait you know? <laughs> I yeah. wore the wrong uh, dress today outside. Here, it's good and cool. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we look forward to maybe kind of following up on this another time, too, as, mm -hmm. as things move forward. And definitely curious about, you know, some of the things you guys have in the, in the works. I mean, is AI a part of your company a process? Now, I know that you're just, as, phys as just uh, single people who are trying to figure it out, it's different. But has your company tackled that in any way? I, I hate to mm -hmm. put you off sync on that. Yet, yeah, but. I try to stay out of anything tech and uh I, I have full confidence in those teams yeah. to, they know what they're doing exceptionally right. well i'd be shocked if they haven't right um or but i really try not to open that door in the uh and look in there it's but, like uh, i'm not going to talk <laughs> about foreign exchange yeah. money i'm just going to yeah. leave it to you right. so yeah. you're not going to talk about tech because that's a, yes. that's that's their team <laughs> yeah. it's, it's exactly. probably a bunch of people you never see you never heard you just get an email and say we're doing this now yeah mm -hmm. you know um what we won't ever do, though, and we haven't, and a lot of companies have done this, is uh, basically replace people with humans. I mean, right. I'm sitting in your studio right now. Absolutely. Right? And Anna's sitting in your studio right now. And clients can speak to customers, or we can speak to customers. We've got t teams that can speak to customers. A lot of it's moved to online type stuff. Sure. And, you know, chat boxes mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. We'll never fully, fully do that. Get away. Um, fingers crossed we'll never fully do yes. that, but a lot of companies have gone that direction and it really takes a lot of the, the human element away and, um, and we've, uh, we're not looking at doing that. Yeah. I think that's, and, and a lot of people say that about realtors and mortgage people too, but there still needs, you know, 
there's still that need of a human connection and trust and just a reassurance that you're making right decisions, you know, um, especially like people moving to Florida, you know, they, you know, if I was to move to Colorado, I mean, I know you can ski there and I know it's, you know, uh, you know, a couple of things, but I, you know, what else, you know, where do I go to do things? What does it cost to live here? Yeah. What is it, you know, th- so everybody needs that guidance. And I think that, you know, mm-hmm. your field, because you're do it do, so mm-hmm. personal. I mean, it's their, their money, you know, it's personal. It's the biggest they investment need of their to life. talk to somebody. It's true. Yeah. You know, and I think with mortgage and, and currency exchange mm-hmm. and, and real estate, you know, if, if robots take over, at least I'll probably be dead by that time. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, everybody thought, you know, oh, Zillow and Open Door and all these people are going to take away agents, but it's like, who's there waiting for the client that Open Door sent there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. It's a licensed agent. You know, you can't take mm-hmm. that away. And, you know, that's never going to go away. That service, the concierge mm-hmm. experience. Um, me buying a house, you know, like through him, sight unseen, I needed to trust him to ch- tell me what's there, uh, going into two video. Hey, show me the, the bad, yeah, you know, the good, like, the bad and, you and know, the ugly. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> exactly. Right. It's exactly. Ugly. Okay. And then so. we did the, you know, inspection over the phone, you know, like zoom or whatever you want. Yeah, uh, yeah. FaceTime. Yes. Yep. And mm. you know, all that stuff, Which you know, we're, we're doing that Friday too. Stop so. knocking your, yep. Mm. We're, doing that, we're doing that Friday. <laughs> so, no. So, yeah, so you'll never get rid of that. But if, you know, the moment you take away that human touch Mm -hmm. and then everybody just feels like they're a number in the system or whatever, then uh, service really takes a nosedive. But uh, that's what we're always looking to do because we want our people to be treated the way we treat them Mm -hmm. and the way we Mm -hmm. take such careful um, approach approach to their situation. We're very sensitive to every single person's unique situation. Right. And, you know, we always make sure that if we hand them off to anyone, they're going to do the same thing because it's mm-hmm. a reflection of us, you know, yeah. like our home inspectors our title companies that we like to recommend or lenders or whatever. Mm-hmm. If that trust is gone, is diminished, then we never work right. with them again. Right. And yeah. that's just pure negligence. I feel yeah. just kind of take it over and there's just nobody to be seen and nobody's responsible. That's yeah. the biggest thing. You have to be responsible. Yeah. yeah. And do what you say you're going to do. I mean, that's why I love building these kind of relationships because, you know, you could just tell me about your company, but now we know about your company and know who's part of it and who makes it work. I mean, it's so much different than just saying, oh, I met this person, give them a call, maybe they can help you. I can say, oh, you know, call these folks. They're great people. They got this going on. They've been in Florida forever, you know, moved in from Germany. I mean, the, the story that can come along with that introduction mm-hmm. is so, so key. And then uh, building relationships. So, but we really appreciate your time here. I mean, and, and we're wide open book. If you ever, you know, want to get in here again, we'd love to have you. So, yeah. great. Thanks great, for yeah. the knowledge that yeah. we got today. Um, it's definitely like, drinking from a fire hose but <laughs> i feel like i know enough to be dangerous now yeah. enough to be like all right go over there yeah <laughs> i mean that's the, that's the main mess that's the main thing yeah. is you know, we'll get done with a presentation or something and, and i can see people and they're just like light bulb right and i was like yeah. all you need to know is when they're foreign and they need to send money just, just send us us, copy me in on an email right. we'll sort it we'll take care of it yeah, yeah. like okay yes. right. that's yes. all i need to know but yeah well that's awesome yeah well, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank we you. appreciate it too. Thank you. <laughs> As I bang my mic here and crush it and just destroy the whole part. Right. So thank you so much for that information, Ann and Brian. Currencies Direct, their information is down below. Just give them a call if they can help you in any way. And if I can help you in any way, just give me that call, shoot me that text, or shoot me that email, and I'll be there for you. Until the next video or podcast, you guys have a great day, a wonderful week, and an awesome year. Thank you so much.